So I have a great pleasure today to, to have uh, Jan Lorenz with us. I just, <coughs> yesterday I learned that he's applied mathematician because for no, almost all my life, I thought that he's a physicist, but also he's a social scientist. So recently, like, not really recently, like for 10 years or maybe more, he's really working with, with social scientists and he's publishing in those journals, but by training he's applied mathematicians and he's really, really, a well-known person in uh, opinion dynamics. So all, all of you that are, were working in this field, for sure you uh, know his papers, but for the rest of you, I can only tell that he's really, a uh, really, really well-known person. And uh, he published many interesting papers on uh, dynamics of opinion and attitude formation. And also this will be the subject of today's talk. So. Uh, thank you, Jan, for uh, for being with us, and uh, and the screen is yours. Yeah, thank you, thank you for this way way too much praise. But uh, let's see if <laughs> what you think of of my work. So I share this screen um, and go to present model. So yeah, what I what I tell you today is uh, is uh, work uh, from the paper which was just uh, just accepted at the, uh, at the psychological review, which is a fairly good theoretical psychology journal. So one of these, one of these uh, papers, which took a long time and I needed to collaborate with, with, with uh, psychologists and, and another, another sociologist to, 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 to get this into that. And um, so, so therefore I hope it's interesting for you who mainly come from, yeah, from this uh, physical perspective. Um, so there's there's a lot of uh, a lot uh, uh, so this opinion and attitude dynamics it's a field which is uh, studied from many perspectives and the one where you are all familiar with is the sociophysics perspective and there's really long long term research been now starting with voter models copied from from easing models or or yeah or the the, the old works of of Weidlich. Um, but um, and then this this culminated um, oh no then come from another stream came these uh, these opinion dynamics under bounded confidence model which is somehow the whole work we are uh, I'm, I'm presenting today is uh, is related to um, actually it's kind of remodeling of these continuous opinion dynamics models but starting more strictly from from psychological theories that's basically what what uh, what, what what I'm doing today. Uh, and you know we had these agent-based simulations um, of the of the bounded confidence model in its two versions from Hexelman and Krause, uh, which are my my by the way my PhD supervisors, uh, and from from Diff one and others. Um, and then there were these uh, master equation or whatever you call it in physics, like things that you can model the density distribution and derive these bifurcation diagrams. So these were interesting theoretical work. Um, and basically, I'm still uh, still working with this type of models, um, extending it with some more mechanisms and uh, and trying to validate or checking this back with, with psychological theory and data. So there's also opinion in, in attitude dynamics. Uh, it's also a field in, in social psychology, actually, and also quite old. Actually, many of the papers coming from the 60s or 70s some really with some mathematical modeling, of course, not much computer simulation, or if, but even this has been done in this time, but uh, of course, very rudimentary. Um, but there's a lot of uh, work on, uh, on attitude change or attitude formation, a lot with this idea of uh, how does persuasion work? How can we persuade people to have attitudes which we want them to have? In some sense, of course, a big marketing topic. So there were, were experience, experiments and a lot of theory on how can we measure attitudes, but this is all relatively fairly developed already uh, for several decades now. Um, so, uh, but um, in some sense, um, yeah, this research on opinion and attitudes and then it comes from, from these both perspectives. And I just copied this slide in because we were discussing a bit on uh, what's the differences between, or difference in attitudes between types of researchers. So attitudes in a more broad sense. So and uh, physics and psychology are in some sense quite quite similar. Is one thing I was uh, was observing, um, because they have similar disciplinary aims. So they all very want to understand things very deeply. So compared to other social scientists and psychologists, always think of themselves. Okay, we are really at the 
at the bottom. So we are really explaining what what's really happening. All these sociology things. This is more 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 macro stuff and not not really going down to the to the brain to the fundamental entity of humans. And that's similar in physics somehow. Where we we really at the base. We, 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 we think we are really at the basic basics of things. And actually, actually, also the culture is quite similar. So relatively high publication frequency and high team sizes often. So this is this is also similar in some sense. But in, in another sense, uh, social psychology and sociophysics are antagonistic in, in their way of explaining things. So in psychology, there's this general tendency just from the research me methods to explain everything uh, based on differences in individual, indiv individual cognitive functions. So when there is a difference, when there is something uh, happening in polarization, they think of, okay, well, how, how, how does it come that people have this? This individual person, how, why is it so extreme? And that's basically the focus. And there's uh, surprisingly little focus on uh, on the emergence of, of macro phenomena, because this is just usually not the focus of of, of the of, of, of the entities they are studying. And that's basically yeah, what then uh, uh, sociophysics is doing. And that's much more uh, as what also sociologists think about. So. Um, the outline for today is then that we uh, take indi these individual theories of attitude change from psychology, put them into a society model as uh, one is doing it in sociophysics. But here we, I try to do it at least a bit more based on uh, psychological literature and then study the emerging outcome as basically we, uh, we know. And I also show you a bit of uh, opinion data where we are basically currently in a project of, uh, of matching this more or trying to to, to calibrate models to um, that they that they produce data similar to reality, but this is uh, this is not this is just work in project at pro process at the moment at the moment. So what opinion data do we have? Uh, I'm not talking about about a Twitter social media data or something, but I'm talking about survey data, and this is just a glimpse. First, starting perhaps with uh, with uh, with uh, with movie rating because I have a quite old paper on that. There we see already some of the phenomena we are studying. These are these are the worst and the best movie I think in the IMDb uh, database of, of movies. And you see this uh, this is the worst movie. 77% uh, of people give it just one star, which is the lowest amount. Uh, and this is somehow how close to ex what we call extreme consensus uh, how we get in real data. And that's the most positive extreme consensus with the best movie in the database. 9.3 stars for thank you, Jensen. Um, and uh, yeah, these are two other or three other uh, histograms of, uh, of, of, of movie star ratings. And uh, in 2009, I, I tried to, to fit a levi skew alpha stable distribution, which has four parameters, which you see here, uh, of, of, of three, three of them you see here, the, and then the, the middle, the, the central, no, the, the location parameter is, uh, is the fourth parameter, which is basically correlates with, with the number of stars, mostly. And I was trying to, to fit this distribution um, to, to uh, the empirical, empirical histograms with this idea that we have some kind of overlapping tails, which we then group. So this overlapping tail is grouped to this one bin. That's the own theoretical assumption somehow here that, that this, is, this is the underlying continuous distribution and this is a discretized and confined thing. Uh, and then based on this, I made some, some, uh, some, some data analysis and try to uh, try to produce a one parameter fit. And this still works fairly well, um, explaining basically uh, the, the structure of, of, um, of, of, of histograms um, in movie ratings. Um, but it's not so easy when, once we go to, once we go to, uh, to other data, what, what we are more interested in, attitude landscapes on political or, or yeah, or more societal things. Um, and these are, these are, this is somehow a snapshot of the data we are studying uh, at the moment. Uh, this is data from the European Social Survey where they have a lot of questions on, um, on a zero to 10 scale. For example, how much, uh, for example, the left-right placement. Let's look here at the left-right self-placement in Norway. So these are the people who uh, are, are, are fully left. These are the people who are fully right. These are the people who are uh, neutral on the left-right dimension, and you see these these two peaks here matching a bit what we see in the bounded confidence model, but in a much more blurred sense. So we don't see a peak here and a peak here and nothing in between, but we see 
much in between, but we see that there is a peak. So that's that's non-trivial. So there there is there is something uh, with this clustering uh, clustering in in the group in some sense. We even see it somehow here, but even as you see, very blurred. Or here, trusted police in Serbia, quite 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 fragmented, five peaks. Um, but we also see uh, things like a bit similar to movies like these. Uh, yeah, this is here categorized, categorized as extreme consensus, although it's not fully extreme, but you see there is some kind of one peak uh, distribution with, with a, a clear bias. You see something still close to a normal distribution. And you also see this uh, consensus phenomenon. Um, OK. Um, let's come to the to the model. So as I as I said, this is a paper. It's uh, just accepted, um, and it's, uh, there's already a preprint out, uh, which I recently updated to the to the newest version. Um, and how how did we start? So what what we were trying to we were we were we were, we were, we were getting um, um, our theory from a, from a, a book in mathematical psychology, which I discovered some some years ago. It's from the 80s, from Hunter Danes and Cohen, and they have. Yeah, these mathematical psychology focus. They they collected a lot of empirical models, which which were used to uh, design experiments on attitude change, and uh, extracted all the equations. Basically, how they formalized how they formalized um, the attitude change, um, and it's all about. Uh, this is the basic setup somehow. So they have this passive communication paradigm. Is that is what what they mean with we have uh, we have an uh, we have a we have a receiver and we have um, uh, a source which uh, which broadcasts a message and then uh, the the receiver might change the attitude and underlying is all, always this idea at any moment in time we can measure uh, we can measure attitudes on an effective or evaluative scale something like what i what i what i uh, uh, show show here with with emojis mm. so and that's 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 the basic setup and it's very similar actually it's basically describing uh, what we are using as update function in continuous opinion dynamics models all the time, um, and that's that's the basic uh, the basic equation setup. So you uh, you have a, you have an attitude uh, after something, you have an attitude before something, which is the broadcasting of the message, and you have this difference. And now the question is, uh, what is the functional form of this change? So this is the attitude change. What uh, what is the functional form of this? And the whole book is basically about this one-shot singular situation. Um, and now I present a, a few of the dynamics. In the paper, there are uh, some more boiling down to, always boiling down to uh, one uh, long equation with several factors in them. And I just present uh, some. So the simplest one is uh, what, what we label then as contagion. Um, still, uh, still, of course, in this, in this um, Continuous setting, <clears throat> and the idea is, is super simple. That um, the the uh, the message, which is basically uh, will be the attitude of someone else in the following, is um, is just a signal which you add to your uh, attitude. That means so if you are fairly is slightly negative, you get a positive message. You get more positive. You are neutral. You get a positive the same message. You get even more positive. Uh, you are already positive, you get a positive, you are getting super positive. So that's this simple idea. Uh, and then you have this uh, parameter uh, change strength, which is just modifying, okay, how much does it affect you? Does it uh, affect you in full or not? If it is, uh, this is just when, when we scale down the effect a bit, then people just don't become so much happy. This, this is yeah, super simple linear model. And there's another contrasting model, which is basically also the underlying assumption of the bounded confidence model, is that people assimilate, so they are they are moving towards the opinion of the other. So it's not when you get a positive message, you get more positive, but it's more when you get a positive message, uh, you assimilate towards this message. So if you have been even more positive than the message, you are getting less positive. That's a, that's the difference of assimilation. So that that you're not you're not just getting a getting a push in a certain direction, but you are moving towards the opinion of another. And of course, there's also then, this is this is full assimilation. People, when they get this message of super positive, they get super positive. Um, but, um, um, but if you skate, oops, 
if you scale it down, then, then people move only a bit toward that message. So here they get a super positive message. So this person becomes more positive, this person becomes more positive, this person becomes more positive. So it's, this is the idea of, 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 of most bounded confidence model, for example, that people move halfway basically to the, to the attitude of the other. So these are the two things. And uh, I, as I understand for the first time, we put them in, in one model here where we say, um, yeah, we, we introduce this parameter degree of assimilation. So when this is one, we have the assimilation model. When this is zero, we are, of course, this term vanishes and we are in the, in the, in the even simpler uh, contagion model. And that's, 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 uh, that's the core of, of the whole, of the whole um, dynamics. And then basically to this update function here, we have these st uh, change strengths. And there we add other, other factors later, which come from, from psychological theory, a polarity factor, motivated cognition factor, or what one, one might also call bounded confidence factor. So that's, but that's, a, that's the fundamental form, this, this thing, and then several factors which might uh, uh, emphasize or decrease uh, change. Okay, now comes this, uh, this is a setup you all know that you just, that we just uh, put it in the dynamic model that we, that we update uh, several time steps. Um, okay, yeah. So, and this is just, uh, just one, uh, just one example to once again show you the difference between contagion and assimilation. So this is, a, this is the attitude um, of a person and this is a change when this message is broadcasted. So this is contagion, there is the message pl plus uh, plus uh, plus two, for example, um, and then this is what's happening with contagion. This is what's happening with assi uh, with a mix between contagion and assimilation, and this is happening with assimilation. And if you see now, when the opinion changes, these are the things happening with contagion. Basically, nothing changes. It's always these 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 these, these plus two, uh, but with with assimilation. Um, yeah, you have you you are moving always towards M. But the difference, the interesting part is in the is in the middle, that uh, that you have this. Okay, up, this is the kind of the turning point up up here. There's nothing nothing contagious anymore, but the person is is drawn backwards, um, because now the the assimilated power is stronger than the contagious uh, contagious power. Okay, this is this is in the the simulation update. It's basically the what is what is what is done in uh, Defoin's paper papers except that it's even simpler that we are in this passive mode that there is there is um oh first we have uh, we have uh, we another difference to most models uh, studied in the literature is that we start here now with normal distribution and we have we have boundaries so we say minus 3.5 is the most negative oops, the most negative opinion and this plus 3.5 is the most positive opinion that means normal distributed attitudes with the standard normal distribution, they are almost all within that range. So nothing, nothing over it. But, with, but, but the model here is that we have this, uh, this strict bound. It cannot be more than this. This is also important for contagion, of course. Okay, that's, 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 uh, that's, uh, that's the uh, initial condition, uh, random normal distributed uh, opinions. And the mode is now we, we pick the agent which updates, it picks another agent, this is the message, and then this person updates. So it's even simpler uh, than than the, the classical model because this person does not update in in our model, but it doesn't change the dynamics at all. Okay, this is uh, this is how it's working, and then we uh, we also put in this this great in, uh, invention uh, from Mallorca. This what 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 I call in the uh, in the in the in the psychology paper we 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 thought about how to call this. We call it now the idiosyncratic attitude change. Um, we have a small probability that uh, that the person uh, just picks a new random, uh, a new a new initial opinion. Actually, you can also model it switching back to the old one. This basically would not change the dynamic and dynamics in most chat settings. But okay, this is the idiosyncratic attitude change, and we have these parameters, which is the frequency, how how much, how much, um, how much. Um, new attitudes, uh, uh, new random attitudes uh, enter enter the enter the, the distribution, typically quite low. Okay, that's then the, that's then the, the, the flow chart. We have uh, for each agent, we have this fundamental decision. Rarely they pick just a new attitude. Normally they pick another, another agent, look at it uh, and adjust because of attitude change. That's, that's basically it. Then we have a net logo simulation and um, 
we uh, this is a, this is a simple way of um, of contagion. So this is this yeah this was the um, this is the um, how do you say um, the simple dynamics of of contagion where you just have this uh, where just a message is uh, is um, gives you a push in a certain direction. So in difference to the bounded confidence model. What is important here now is that uh, zero, the zero point has some has some importance because when you have received zero messages, message opinion zero, this uh, has no effect. But when it, when it's positive, it has positive, negative, it has negative effect. So what's happening in the dynamics is uh, initially uh, they are centered around the, the middle, so nothing particularly happens because sometimes people were pushed into that direction, sometimes in that direction. But at some point there is a slight slight imbalance. And this then quickly reinforces in an exponential uh, fashion, and so it drives quickly to one extreme. So, so here you then see that okay, the bias is increasing to almost maximum. Uh, um, yeah. Okay, I think we will not not go deeper into these me measures. So, but the outcome is always always an extreme consensus in that way. So you always go either to the extreme left or to the extreme right. And you see, we have some idiosyncrasy here, 0 0.01. So 1% 1 of each opinion update is uh, is a new random number, but uh, this uh, has no has no effect. Um, it cannot prevent the, the extremization of the society. So of course, you see here now there are always these these people. These are the idiosyncratic people, but they are always absorbed quickly to to the extreme. Um, okay, now um, when we increase. Um, the idiosyncratic update, so to 5%. Actually, I'm not totally sure if this is an error. It might be that this is 0 0.17. But anyway, it's small. It's still less than 50%. So still now the, there, is, there, is, uh, there is little. There, mostly it's social influence. And only to a, to a lower fraction, it is uh, idiosyncratic change. So what's happened now is that now the although people are still... Uh, still uh, influencing each other it's uh, the idiosyncrasy is, is strong enough to prevent this drift to one extreme which should happen so that's that's a, that's a point there is a kind of certain fairly fairly short transition uh, when idiosyncrasy is large enough this prevents uh, this keeps the society uh, in the middle basically in a in a situation which is still very close to the initial condition what what i call a diversified outcome so the first one was extreme consensus outcome now it's a diversified outcome kind of stable stable stochastically stable distribution um and this is an assimilation this is what we what we all know even from the very early uh, consensus models coming uh, coming also from mathematics uh when you have just assimilative uh, strengths then you have consensus even if you have some idiosyncratic change uh, they will all, always absorb to the center so these are the three basic outcome extreme consensus neutral consensus uh diversity diversity um, interesting point is now uh, we have this assimilation and contagion. What is what about the, the the things in the middle? So when we have some kind of certain degree of assimilation, so this means eighty five percent is the assimilative force, and then zero point one point five is the contagious force of a message. So you have you have the mix of both. And what's happening typically still always with this low degree of idiosyncrasy. What you see is that. Um, Contagion has this tendency to dominate assimilation. It takes a lot of time. You see here now, initially, for initially uh, the people uh, form this consensus, but but uh, also there, after some time, there is an initial initial. There is some some bias happening by chance, and then this reinforces slower than than uh, than of course when we have rho equal to zero, but still uh, it happens. Uh, probably if you have super large, uh, uh, yeah, probably. Depending on the degree of idiosyncrasy, you can also again save the society uh, from from getting to the extreme. But yeah, just the forces are are fairly strong. So you need just little contagious forces, and at the end, uh, assimilation, uh, um, extreme consensus is the outcome. We can uh, we can uh, study this with the kind of face face diagram which we have now in the paper, um, where you have here the idiosyncrasy probability and here the degree of assimilation. So this is the contagious uh, the contagious force. Um, this is the contagion model, the pure contagion model. This uh, this row, and you see there is this transition of here we have the we are in the diversified phase, 
uh, where there is no extreme consensus, and here we are in the in the in the extreme uh, in the extreme consensus consensus phase. I think it's not fully sharp, but it's a fairly fairly sharp 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 border here. And you see, uh, it, yeah, you need you need less and less idiosyncrat idiosyncrasy when the degree of assimilation uh, is increasing, but still there remains this there remains this uh, this, this 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 critical bound. Uh, while these transitions, this is diversified, this is condensed, and this is in central consensus, this is more a gradual thing which we classified along some more or less reasonable uh, thresholds. So this is more or less a continuous transition. But here, here people stay more a bit more diverse than initially. This is a bit more condensed, but what you would not call a consensus, and this is a consensus, but uh, of course still it's you can also classify it as condensed. But the interesting, interesting, interesting transition is this. It can also it also modifies with the change strength this alpha parameter just modifying how how fast people move and uh, the yeah the, but the general structure is not changing uh, it just changes the the, uh, the the location of the bounds now let's come what we call uh, motivated cogn cognition which is uh, actually very similar to the bounded confidence this, uh, assumption actually the bounded confidence is a special case in what is coming um, when you look at fairly old literature and social psychology you find some evidence of 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 things which are similar to bounded confidence um actually uh, what 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 some experiments were about this what is the what is the effect of opinion discrepancy discrepancy on opinion change and that's that's what you see here so these were people uh, presented uh, with messages with certain discrepancy to their own uh, attitude and this was the opinion change how much did did people change on 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 a, on a on a on a gradual scale? Actually, I would have to look it up. What the what the exact question were? I don't have it present at the moment. But uh, what they were what they what they were studying uh, what they were studying here is um, the credibility of the source. So, and you see when you have uh, high credible source, uh, the opinion change is is always is, is still increasing. Of course, opinion change has to increase when the opinion when the discrepancy is large, you can change more towards that opinion. Uh, but when you see when you have only mildly credible sources, there is this there is this breakdown. So when you have two, which, which is basically the bounded confidence assumption, when when the when the discrepancy is too large, uh, you have um, uh, the the opinion change uh, declines again. Okay, and this was one equation uh, taken from the book of Hunter, Danes, and Co Cohen. Um, Modifying uh, modifying the change with this with this functional form where this d is the discrepancy different difference between message and, and attitude and this is the functional form, um, and what we introduced now is um, um, is uh, is a, a, a sharpness parameter so we actually we we replace this this uh, exponent two with a k and when we go when we let k go to uh, to infinity we end up with a bounded confidence assumption when k goes to infinity we have a sharp uh, sharp uh, sharp drop um so this is an invention of, of from, from us it was not 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 discussed in the in the in the psychological literature actually just some papers for example the famous paper of of abelson a psychologist also from the 60s he 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 played around with functions like this not exactly this one but a very similar one also with this smooth decline and he then said okay still we have a consensus outcome and that's quite strange because we see in reality at least on some attitudes we have strong polarization uh, and not consensus but why on earth there's always consensus when we model even this thing so this was sometime a kind of a kind of a puzzle which was then i think it was also the motivation of of krause to to formulate this bounded confidence assumption with this very sharp thing uh and then see okay at least here we don't have consensus uh, interesting at least so that was the history of 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 of, of the ideas i think um Okay, what's now happening when we have motivated cognition as this factor in our model? Let's first start with the contagion, which is somehow not the the, the, the typical uh, thing in the bounded confidence world. But uh, here you see that um, even this mild form of um, you know, the smooth the smooth uh, motivated cognition function uh, enables the evolution of of these bipolarized situations. So when when the people um, so what what's happening here? This is a change uh, the change function. 
you see people who are far away from each other, they still influence each other, but much less. So and this is then enough. So this decline in influence, although it's not zero, but it's enough uh, to uh, to drive people uh, apart and, 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 and let people stay there. So um, so we don't need the sharp bounds to increase polarization uh, to produce polarization in this um, in this uh, in this contagion framework. So with this contagion, uh, when when people are are, are, are naturally self driving, driving themselves to become more more extreme in, in whatever direction, then uh, then uh, only mild motivated cognition is enough to 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 create two groups. Um, Motivated cognition with assimilation is, of course, not doing is not doing much when we have this mild form. It just takes a bit more time until uh, until the more extreme ones go to the center. But as there is always some positive influence uh, from the from the central from the central group on the on the on the on the still more extreme ones, they are uh, just a bit slower, but they are absorbed to the consensus. So there's nothing changing. When we have these smooth, these smooth bounds for for motivated cognition or smooth bound, smooth confidence bound, um, so we still have consensus. Uh, but when we have sharp motivated cognition, uh, we have actually what we uh, what we see in the in the more or less what we see in the in the bounded confidence model that we have the formation of here three more or less uh, large clusters of course because we are studying normal initial distribution we have we usually have this central cluster um with the central cluster um uh, being being existing and being large um and we have smaller clusters perhaps evolving here but probably they are uh, not really showing up because we still have this mild idiosyncrasy but the interesting thing is that we still don't have uh full bounded confidence. So we have k equal 10 means a smooth bound, but fairly sharp. So but it's not a, not a, not a, it's not the bounded confidence model here. So what we see as the outcome is what we call then fragmentation. Um, the um, interesting point is now when we when we switch idiosyncrasy off. So this is exactly the same as before, but we switch idiosyncrasy totally off. So 0% uh, new attitudes coming in. Uh, and we let the simulation run run much much longer, ex actually 200 time steps uh, faster in a certain sense. So then we then we see uh, in the very very long run we'll see almost consensus evolving. Okay, these are quite uh, quite far away, but what's happening is that that we'll that we'll have a consensus finally because there's always this very small positive positive influence. Um, and this is also what 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 puzzles some puzzles some modelers for some time that they say okay the bounded confidence assumption is quite instable so once we increase introduce smooth bounds which is quite realistic when you look at at experimental data you could not say that there's never influence of an extreme one to another extreme one so sometimes they may influence each other or at least they influence each other a certain a little bit um but then we'll have consensus again in the very long run. That was that was the conclusion. But the 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 the, the um, uh, let me let me take this slide before. So I I, I studied this with, with with two other colleagues. We put these both assumptions together. The 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 the, the idiosyncratic attitude change uh, in the in in the models of of, of Raoul and and uh, this smooth bound. And this is this combination then 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 shows us that. When we have a, a bit of idiosyncrasy, then we have the same clustering dynamics, even when we have smooth bounds, as long as they are sharp enough in a certain sense. So that's 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 basically the message. When we have these two things together, uh, we still see the, the the clustering coming, even under under smooth bounds. Um, so let's go to the uh, to the to the uh, to the to the phase diagrams. So this is the bipolarization phase. Um, and what we have, what do we have now? We have the same. We have the degree of assimilation along the y-axis as before, uh, but now we don't have the noise here. We always have the noise fixed at this small level of 0 0.1 in these diagrams, 0 0.01. Uh, but we have the latitude of acceptance decreasing, so bound of confidence. So this is basically an absent latitude because it's quite large. And here we have small latitudes, and we see we have uh, with smooth bounds. We have we have. Uh, extreme consensus still sorry and we have polarization here uh, 
uh, but when we have sharper bounds, we always end up in either bipolarization or when uh, when it's assimilation and not contagion, we have these fragmented things. But you, you again see that uh, assimilation uh, or contagion, at least even in a small amount, all quickly dominates and, and brings the society to just bipolarization. So only when you have fairly close to, to assimilation, you have these fragmented, fragmented uh, things we are seeing. Um, okay, and then, yeah, as I, as I said before, fragmentation is, is then robust, uh, even with, with, smooth, with smooth bounds. Um, just one glimpse of, uh, of on a study which is which, we, which is not published yet, which I basically on my on my list for ten years, but not not published yet, is uh, heterogeneous bounds of confidence. Um, there's this idea that yeah, some people might be more open to change, have larger bounds, larger uh, a larger uh, larger larger latitude of acceptance, and some smaller. There's even some evidence here. This is a more theoretical thing that 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 the higher ego involvement of people is in this attitude, the more important the attitude is for the person, the less it changes. This is the ego involvement idea. And here is some, uh, I, don't, I think it's also experimental data, but this was, this was on, uh, on, this is the intelligence scale. And then the idea is um, how much, what is the probability that you change or how much do you change? And uh, when you are uh, fairly clever and get new information, then you, you uh, you understand what the other person is doing, but you don't learn anything new because you already know it. But when you are very stupid, it's the other way around. You just don't understand what the other person is doing. Only when you're intermediate, you are uh, your, your influence. The influence is high. That's that's the basic idea. Anyway, um, what we do now is that we have uh, that we have the the um, the um, the latitude of acceptance or the bound of confidence is the same as the bound of confidence distributed like a gamma function. So some people have these 2.5 latitude, some people have 0 0.0 or 0 0.1 or something like this. Most people uh, have something intermediate. I think, what is it here? Um, boop, 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 boop. Oh, I can see it. It's ah, okay. It's one. Anyway, so we have we have this distribution, and this is the this is the outcome. Let it run. You already saw it. Um, is that you have this these oscillations coming? So time is also running a bit faster than than in the in the in the, in the earlier models. But what you see is that you that you have this frequent uh, these frequent uh, frequent uh, switches in an almost almost regular shape, and they come of course because of the idiosyncrasy. This is fairly low, but it's of course it's essential for 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 the build up of this new cluster. Then you have a formation of of a, of a large cluster, initially in the middle, and then this gets absorbed to one of the two sides by chance. Um, and as it as it as it move as the big cluster moves here, then joining with this small cluster, then then we have we have a bias in the population to the to the one side, and then there is a lot of empty space in opinion space. So a small cluster starts to form here. Um, yeah, and as I'm trying to uh, yeah to to um, to bring this message to to the social science or political sciences i'm trying to write a paper in political science here and this just takes uh, much longer and yeah so it's still not still not published but i think this is really really interesting i think one one very uh, um, yeah i say uh, one micro mechanism uh, which which may have a have a role in in policy cycles which are a quite common phenomenon in uh, in in many democracies that you have this yeah, electoral shifts or the presidential cycle in the US and many studies think that say that in, in many democracies it's about 12 to 14 15 years that you have a kind of yeah one 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 full policy cycle switching from liberal to uh, conservative and back okay but this is uh, still preliminary work this is some data I found on this issue a political scientist uh, studying um, the tides of consent what's he how's he calling it he's 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 invented a measure of which is called public policy mood where he aggregates a lot of survey data on a macro level uh, and uh, and get these these timelines of public policy mood and his main point is uh, is of course not to explain why why it is uh, but it's more like he says that typically the policy cycle the public policy mood cycle is 
in front of the electoral cycle. So he says, okay, this is driving politics and not the other way around, which you might also, which you might also, which you might also assume. So typically the, the shift comes before the presidential change from, from conservative to liberal or the other way around. That's, that's I think, his main, main study. So with this, I would like to conclude, um, not, not showing the other two, three uh, ex, uh, things which are in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the model, which basically are all having not so drastic consequences. So the main things on radicalization, neutral consensus, polarization or fragmentation uh, is explained by this mix between contagion uh, and assimilation and uh, motivated cognition, including the, the sharpness. So the fragmentation only comes with, with, with sharp motivated con con cognition, that, that's important. Uh, polarization uh, is driven by contagion, of course, and even smooth, uh, moti smooth bounds are, are, are enough. Repulsive forces you don't need, of course, if you add them, uh, they also work. Um, that's, uh, that's, um, that's, that's it. So, thank you. Hope I have kept some. Yeah, thank you very much for this very inspiring talk. So I have a lot of questions, but maybe first other people have some questions. And maybe I will stop recording here.